What can we do? We can come together and hold these emotions together and gather strength because all is not lost. We have roles to play. We will do what we must. We'll do it with each other's support, with the strength of our practice, with the strength of our Sangha, with the strength of our connections. And we pray that many beings will benefit from this. Our families, our children, our parents, our friends, our fellow Sangha members, all who have lost someone, all who have suffered. George Floyd, his parents, his extended family, his friends, his community, all of those like him killed or beaten or threatened by the police, all of those who have suffered as a result of persistent racism and white supremacy that has characterized our society for 400 years. People of color who feel and have felt to some measure every day what many of us white people are just beginning to feel now. The fear, the grief, the anguish, the feeling that it's all broken and always will be, the fear that we can't fix it, the despair, the pain, the fear that we can't fix it. We can come together and hold these emotions together and gather strength. And we pray that many beings will benefit, including all victims of a racist society, which is everyone, because no society is stable no society is good for anyone unless it's good for everyone. White people such as myself are not the primary victims in any way whatsoever, but we all suffer. Even the perpetrators suffer and we must see that too perpetrators of racism, acting out of fear. We can come together and hold these emotions together and gather strength. What are these emotions? Fear, anger, and worst, despair. How do we hold them? What does holding mean? Holding means we feel them. These feelings are so raw and so tender. So we hold them like a child. Like all of humankind, we're a child, a baby. Holding means we feel them. We have a little distance. The feelings are not holding us. We're holding the feelings. 
we can make that shift. We can have a little distance because it's not just about our small selves. It's about all beings who will benefit and we pray that they will benefit. And it's always easier to do something, to do something that has to be done when we're doing it for someone else. And we have this tiny baby, this tiny bundle of raw feelings. This crying baby with this deep cry, so deep it has no name. It's the cry of suffering, suffering of all humanity over all time, suffering of dukkha, suffering of the oppressed. We have some distance because we know it's not only our own suffering. Because when you have a baby to care for, you care for it. You have to. You have no choice. It's not about you. And you hold it so tenderly. And that's how you hold your feelings now. Your fear, your despair, your grief. That's how you hold them. And that means you can't escape them. I'm sorry. You can't just leave the baby somewhere unless it's sleeping. You can leave it a little while if it's sleeping. Thank goodness babies sleep or we would never survive. And so we can sleep a little too and we can rest or maybe now that the baby's sleeping, we get up, we go outside, the baby's within earshot. We see the grass, the green leaves, we hear the birds, we see that sky, it's becoming a June sky now, and we hear the breeze and we watch our animal friends and it's reassuring and we're grateful. And the baby wakes up and we hold it and we don't want to hold it and we get tired of holding it. But that's what we do again and again. We hold this pain, we acknowledge it, we feel it. We have a practice that helps us. We know that there are ways of doing it. You don't let your head run away from you for too long. Because rumination, thinking, stories, scenarios are all the enemy of holding. There's a time to think, to plan, to escape, even to fantasize, to imagine it's different but there's a time to hold the feelings again. And that means feel them. And when the mind tells you to run away, don't let it come back. No thank you to my mind. I know you're trying to help. You're trying to help keep me from pain. You're trying to help me survive. But today, right, no, right now, no, I'm sorry. I've got to hold my feelings in a way that doesn't involve thought. I've got to be present with this pain right now because of all beings because of the baby, because of dukkha, 
because of the oppressed, because of the oppressor, because of the flames and that nasty smell. So I need to hold this pain just now and thank you mind, but no thank you. Right now I'm going to be here in the body, this emotion body, this emotion body here now, I can connect. I quiet my mind. I turn off the news for a bit. I walk outside. I sit on a bench. I sit on a cushion. I range around my house, filling the spaces, letting my emotion body lead me. My surroundings are sacred. The small things of my life are altars. I hold my emotions and honor them and care for them. And I go from room to room and there are no places in between because I honor each place, each place. I do not rush past any place and it hurts. It physically hurts to stay here. I feel it deep in my belly. And sometimes I can't. Sometimes I can't stay with that trauma. And that's okay. That's okay. It's not that time yet. That's okay. We'll get help with that. We'll stick to the rooms where we feel safe. It's okay. We'll be ready when we're ready. We can come together and hold these emotions together and gather strength. Together, what is that? We can do this together. Together, what a radical idea. How could that possibly work? Ranging from room to room, holding the baby, feeling the feelings with a quiet, quiet mind. You need all your concentration to quiet your mind to find that subtle thread of room to room and follow it. How can you possibly do that with others? Well, you can, you know why, you know why? Because those tender feelings, those raw tender feelings are that baby that's all humanity, that's dukkha, that's suffering, that's your mom and dad, that's George Floyd, that's George Floyd calling out for his mother. That's rage, there's rage in there too. That makes you want to burn it all down. That's rage that makes you hate them all because of what they did to you and what they did to your mother and father. That's hatred and anger and it's suffering, that deep, deep suffering. And it's the suffering of all humanity because we all have it in us. We don't like to admit it the oppressor and the oppressed, that's me, that's us. Those raw, tender feelings and are all of that, and that's all of us. And we all meet together there. And there's a vast, universal cry of pain.
and we meet there, and yet we meet separate. Because I can't know how you experience this. And in fact, that's the problem. Thinking I can know your experience. I don't know what it's like to be black. I haven't known serious trauma. I can't know. I've got to be so careful about making assumptions about you. If I am to meet you, it must be with that understanding. Little baby, I can't know what you'll grow up to be, and it's none of my business. My business is to love you and let you be. We can come together and hold these emotions together and gather strength. What you do is not my business, and yet I see you in these little boxes, and I'm with you, and you're with me, and we're together. We're a gathering. We're a sangha. We've been together a while. If you just dropped in and don't know us, we invite you in. All we have for you is a blank wall to look at and unequivocal love. We can come together and hold these emotions together and gather strength. And gather strength. Strength may seem the furthest thing from your mind. Strength, what about survival? How about getting through today? How about getting through tonight? But strength will come as sure as all those visits to all those little altars of our lives where we stop to offer some incense to express gratitude to the Buddha and offer flowers and remember acts of kindness. All those little altars of our lives we know what to do. As we range from room to room, honoring ourselves, honoring the emotions, letting them come, pausing here at this altar, because this one is particularly difficult. Relaxing here at this one because my God, I had something that approximated the feeling of a normal moment. I pause at this one with special gratitude. And I have a special but rougher gratitude for the altar that won't leave me alone to have a normal moment. The one that says, never forget, you're different now. That's the one we want because that's how deep we have to go. We have to be different now because we see the lie. I love that lie. That lie I called Minnesota, where life was so very good for me, but not for some. I rescind that lie. I refuse to believe it. And I'll stay at that altar. I'll offer incense there. And I will not misdirect my anger. I will not give up and say, it's too much. I can't take it anymore. I can't figure it out. I will not give up and pick out A or B or C and say, that's the problem, and focus my anger on it 
to the exclusion of all else. I will be mindful of interconnections and complexity. That's my vow. That's my duty as a human being. And I'll ask for strength and I'll find it because I know what to do. I range from altar to altar as I range through my house, omitting none, lingering as long as it takes. I know what to do. I do the next thing. Because as I go from room to room, tasks arise. And when I'm not caring for the baby, and these days it's almost all about the baby, I care for the other things, my partner, my house, my work. I pull weeds, I sweep. I pull weeds, I sweep. I pull weeds, I sweep. I care for things. I know what to do. The baby wakes, I pick up the baby. The baby won't stop crying. It's hell for a while, I lose it all. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do and I don't know what to do. And I visit the altar of, I don't know what to do. A thousand times today if I have to, that's what I do and I gather strength. We can come together and hold these emotions together and gather strength. We together can gather strength. Strength, it seems so unlikely, but you know it will come. It will. There's the shock. We're traumatized now. We're awakened to trauma. What did I hear this morning? Something like a riot is inflicting pain on you because that's the only way you'll know how it feels. There's the total complete shock of that. And we feel the trauma, a deep and painful fundamental correction in the fabric of our country has occurred. We can only hope that all of this pain is not for nothing. We can only hope that we as a nation remember. And we know what to do. We begin to gather strength. First, we take care of the shock, but let's not linger on that too long before we begin again the work that we do. Let's not wait too long. This is urgent. Let's gather strength. Those cries inside are the cries of universal suffering. And our response to that, our very process, our very process of hearing, feeling, sharing those cries, feeling those feelings, allows us to enter into the dynamic functioning of the universe, to enter into compassion with all the strength of the world, with all the energy of the world, with our power, the very things we fear the most can be the source of our strength the strength to act. What can we do? We can come together and hold these emotions together and gather strength and we can act. Thank you. 
So that's something I, I wrote last night. Um, it comes from my own uh, limited perspective. It's based on who I am. I try to broaden out my point of view from my own experience. I don't always succeed at that. Not everything is in there. I think I left out some vital things. I think I probably got some things wrong. Um, I'm uh, hopeful we'll have some comments and I'm looking for those to maybe help fill in some other things. Uh, I'm not saying we all should think the way I'm thinking or feel the way I'm feeling. I'm not saying that this is the standard Zen view. I'm, I'm speaking from my heart. And when I say we should act, well, I do believe that Buddhists should act in the world to end suffering, but I do not presume to know what form of action is appropriate for you. And uh, I know my words today have gone to a very, very difficult place, but I hope I haven't left you there. And so we come together and, uh, and we do this and uh, that strength will be there. <clears throat>